Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Today we're going to be showing you some cool stuff. So first of all here we've got Tiger Data who've sponsored this video. Now this is a bit outside of the content I normally do, but as I have used their time series database, TimescaleDB, for years, I thought this was worth doing a show, and we're going to use, uh, to build an app with this, we're I'm going to show you Git Malscan. Now this is a cool thing that I was sent by email. And what it does, it is able to scan GitHub for suspicious extensions, suspicious file extensions, then download them, run them through a local clam AV instance, and then also optionally use a virus total API to then scan them on the cloud. So what we're going to do with the help of Tiger is we're going to download that data. We're going to get a verdict, and then we're going to insert that into a database powered by Tiger Data. Now, something cool they've added is if you do decide to go and start free, uh, the free trial doesn't require any credit card. So you can just click get started, go to sign up, no credit card required. You just have to give them your name, your email, and your password. There's no need uh, for a credit card because they're confident in their product. They're not trying to trap you in a free trial that's got a labyrinth maze to cancel. Now, Tiger Data's got a lot of cool stuff. One thing that's especially interesting for AI usage is what they're calling a forkable database. They have here, they've got two main things. They've got a vector embedding based, and that's because that can essentially, a vector embedding turns a sentence into a string of numbers, and then you can mathematically, using a it's called cosine similarity, and it's a way of essentially taking the difference between two vectors where we can see how far away or close they are. So using that, we can get an idea of the topics that the malicious repos or anything you're trying to track is doing. And real-time analytics, which we can use. I really like, they have this thing, uh, basically you can build, if you're familiar with financial data, this thing called a candlestick, and you can aggregate data. So you can do something like taking a bunch of trades and turning that into a candlestick, or uh, we can track, for example, how many things are created an hour. And it's all built on a solid foundation of PostgreSQL, which is good, not just because I, I happen to like it, but also because it means you can use it with anything. Like if you use a NoSQL database or any like a, a database that I wrote, uh, the, the main, like, what can be frustrating is every single application you want to use is going to have to have a client for that. Uh, if you're using this, well, Postgres is supported by most things. And you can get a plain Postgres through Tiger Data as well if you want, but why would we, we don't want plain? We want all of the features. So we're going to go with hybrid applications. Now, where do we want this? Uh, given I live on the West Coast, I'm going to go with US West Oregon. These run in AWS. And then we can choose our compute size. So here, and this will affect the pricing, of course. Now, given we're going to be running a pretty small instance, I'm going to go with one CPU and four gigabytes of memory. Uh, you can always upgrade later, but as they say, when you're initially adding data, that could be necessary. So we go save and continue. And what kind of, now this is developed. Now, if we wanted production, we could get a high availability replica. And what that would essentially mean is if everything blew up for whatever reason the system crashed it would just immediately shift over stay up so if you have certain mission critical databases that could be useful but i'm just going to go with this and then we can choose do we want connection pooling so that uh we, we don't we don't need either of these right now and this would be so if we were using aws i'm going to run the rest of this app as this is a demo on my local computer but if we're using aws we could use this and we could use a private network which benefits security because it means you avoid the drawback that can come with a cloud-based database. Uh, you can avoid going over the internet. So we're going to set this up. And there we go. We've now got a service. Took me like two minutes while I was talking to you. See, this is really convenient. We can also download our credential and config. And there's a pre-shipped python.m file. Uh, I, should not, I, I should not show you that. Yeah, but there we go. So we can connect to our service. Now, my personal choice for database management is a tool called Beekeeper Studio. I have the free version. There is, I believe, a paid version, but you don't need it. So we will just choose Postgres because this is just vanilla PostgreSQL with an extension, so it all works. And here we go. We've now got our timescale DB in Beekeeper Studio. 
Uh, I just wanted to test that everything works as we'd expect it to. We got our databases here. So now we're ready to get to work. Okay, so here we have Malscan. Now this is a really cool GitHub project. I've made some changes, like I added .m for security reasons. I will leave a link to this in the description so you can check it out. I think it's a really cool idea. Uh, so I'm going to make some changes, but overall I like this. We got quotient management. We got ClamAV functionality, so I installed ClamAV on this computer, and we. All you'll need is a free GitHub API and a free Virus Total API to use this. So we're going to try this, and then I'm going to port this to Tiger Data. Okay, and now we can search for something. So let's let's try my old favorite for finding malware. Let's try Roblox. Let's just see how this works. It seems the first one we tried seemed to be okay. I'm actually going to remove .py from the list, I think, because that's pretty un unlike. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to remove, not to say that it doesn't happen, but I've just not seen that in malware repos. And I'm also going to get rid of .sh, because that's probably not going to be. I mean, .py is an issue in some of those, like, fake GitHub nuker ones, but for a lot of them, that's not going to be an issue. But now we see how this works. Okay, so now with some luck, we've got a wrapper that will put this into timescale. So we've got this set up as a class, and then if this doesn't work, so it, it fails back, so it doesn't totally rely on that. And it's going to download this stuff and get right to work. So let's try it out. So we're going to make the keyword this time Valorant hack, because that's a very reliable source of malware, because, oh, instant hits. And then we wait for a virus total. And we can now go and look and see how this is working. So we can see the repos. The, and this is built with relational. I, I have this, I'll show you the schema in a second. So we got all of this. We're using all of these SQL features. When you hear the term relational database, this is what they mean. So we've got these in here. And we've got the logs. Now, seems like, okay, now. Now we're using the native JSON type, which we can query directly. We've got a few. Uh, so this one was found to be infected. Now, of course, because this is used, just using antivirus scanning for now, it's not going to be 100% perfect. But we can make this work. And what we can also track is how many we're catching a second. And I'm going to let this run for an hour or so so we can get some good data. And then I'm going to use Claude to throw together a web app for this so that we can show the final result. All right, so I let that run for a few hours and let's see what we've got. So we've got quite a lot. ValorantHack.zip, ValorantHack.exe, Valorant Soft Hub. Now one way we could extend this is we could use an agent-based system that would check for indications in the GitHub description to unpack. So let's put a little front end. We're just going to vibe code something just to demonstrate. And because we're talking about vibe coding, it's a good time to look at a forking. Now, this is something they built specifically for, as they say, agentic uses, but I think it's cool in general. This is called forking. You know how you can fork a Git repository? Well, now you can fork a database. So let's see how easy this is. So we're just going to click fork service. Okay. I'm not going to cut that just so you can see how... Oh. Oh. And it looks like... Uh, is it up? In progress. Okay, we're going to see how long that takes, but there we go. And the idea here is, uh, if, as it turned out, we get the, oh, I'm sorry, I deleted your production database <laughs> thing, uh, well, no problem. Uh, we have it all backed up. You didn't delete the production database. And we have backup, we have automatic backups as well to make this as painless as possible. Really, I think the key value add of using something like this over hosting it yourself, which you can, of course, do. It's open source software that powers this, so you can download it and run it yourself. That's what you want to do. But this is uh, this is like the value add here, is they're like, okay, uh, you want to fork your database? You can. Go fork yourself. Now that we've forked, uh, yep, that's fine. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're going to do real vibe coding, so we're, we're going to let uh, Claude Code pick everything. If you actually, like, if you're seriously wanting to use AI to do things. This is not how you should do it. <laughs> like, not, it, this is the, you, what you should do, if you have, but this is just kind of going to be for fun and to show how we, we got everything packed up, it's fine. 
uh, is you want to figure out all the specification, the plumbing, and then just have the AI write the code, not also design the specifications, or at bare minimum, choose what technologies you're going to use. Although usually, hopefully, we're going to get some sane choices, uh, but who knows? Build a web front end to explore the data. Connect to our timescale database. All credentials are in the to make an easy one command launch. There's something I, I, I think just makes it easier. And we're going to see how long this takes. Shouldn't take that long. It looks like we're ready to go. Took a few minutes. Okay, so what did we end up with? Okay, good. Didn't didn't put our secrets in. That's that's good. That was. So we're gonna try the dev script. Make sure it doesn't do anything boneheaded. It looks like uh, we got a flask app. That's perfectly fine. Okay, what on earth is this doing? Okay, we're just gonna strip that because it's already installed. It looks like it tried to compile uh, Psychopg from source, which is an interesting choice. And it pulls our malware, and we can see, okay, this is actually a pretty good dashboard. You know, I was thinking, well, it's not the most modern approach using uh, this instead of, uh, does this work? Yup, it works. And we've got different, uh, we catalog all of these, stores them in the database. And of course, the scan timeline, because that aggregate hasn't quite yet worked, and we can see the latest ones, we can see when they were scanned, the hash, and we can look at... Uh, we can look at the code, but we can see basically all of the real work is happening in the database layer, right? We got some got some glue code here that Claude generated for us, and the rest is happening in the database layer. Okay, so we do so we do have an oh, I, okay, I see what it did. Okay, yeah, I see what's happened here. And it wrote custom vanilla JavaScript. Well, it works. And we can also we can click through and see infected. Okay, so what's infected? Now, I wonder how this scanning works, because isn't this going to be an encrypted zip? No, it isn't. Okay, okay, that's not very small. Hacks, cheats, guides, safe tips, tricks. I, I think virus total must just be... I, clearly, this is... It's safe. It says safe. There is no virus here. I, I don't know what you guys are on about. So that's going to be all for me for now. Of course, I will have a link. Thank you to Tiger Data for sponsoring this video. I'm also going to upload the code so that you can try this, try and improve it. I, I'm going to polish it a bit off camera before I upload this and then we're going to be good to go please let me know in the comments below what you thought about this if you want to see more of this I might actually keep working on this and sort of put together like a, a community sort of threat intelligence system for me you know people often ask me how do I get so much malware how do I find this stuff well a lot of it is doing and usually I do it manually uh, where I'll just go I'll check these things out I have keywords that I know will turn up good stuff I'll go through it I'll see okay what doesn't quite look right and that's how we do it that's all for me for now bye